Good old Ann. How much work, you know what, raises or lifts, I think work is going to be MGH. By the way, this is really kind of the work energy theorem in disguise. I said work was equal to the change of potential plus the change in kinetic. And if you're starting and ending at rest, your change in kinetic is zero. It's just going to be MGH. It's going to be 688 times 9.8 times 2.4. Six hundred and eighty-eight times nine point eight times two point four, and I get sixteen thousand two hundred. Sixteen thousand one eight one. Uh, I'll write sixteen thousand two hundred joules of work. B says how much power? Power is work over time. So I'm going to write sixteen thousand two hundred, but I'm using my answer button. divided by 45, and I get 359.5, I'll just call it 350, I'll, you know what, I'll call it 360 if I round off properly. And power is measured in watt, watts. How much work will I do if I carry an 8.8 .8 kilogram bag 9.3 meters forward? Remember, I had somebody piggyback someone else. It's the same idea. The force that you're doing work against is gravity, but the distance you're traveling is forward. Mr. Duick, how come if I'm carrying something, though, I actually do get tired? Okay, I'm fibbing a bit. In real life, when you're even just standing, holding a heavy mass, what's happening in your body, there are a whole bunch of muscles that are expanding, contracting, expanding, contracting, and they're doing it in the vertical direction, which is in the same direction of the force, which is why just carrying something, your body does burn energy, even if you're just standing there. But in terms of our physics definition, we would say zero joules. How much force does the motor exert well, they gave me power, so I went with power is force times speed was my first thought, but I don't see a speed there. I just see a time. So then I said, well, maybe it's work over time. How can I get a force into here somehow? Oh, I said, okay. Power is force times distance over time. I guess the force is going to be the power times the time divided by the distance. It's 65 kilowatts. That's 65,000 watts. 35 seconds divided by 17.5. I think this actually works out evenly, doesn't it? I think it's going to be, what, 113,000? 130,000, it's not 13, 30. And that would be Newtons. A rifle can shoot a 4.2 gram bullet. Nice try, Duick. 0 0.0042 kilograms. Find the kinetic energy of the bullet. The kinetic energy is equal to a half mv squared. It's going to be 0.5 times 0 0.0042 times 965 squared. I get 1,955.57, I'll call it 1,960, but I'll store this on my calculator. What work is done on the bullet if it starts from rest? Huh? Well, I think here I would go with the work energy theorem. And I would say to myself, I don't sense that there's a change in height here. At least the question isn't mentioning any kind of a change in height. What's change in anything? Final minus initial. This is going to be a half mv final squared minus a half 
m v initial squared. Oh, wait a minute. It said it started from rest. You know what the answer is? 1,960 joules of work. Yeah, that makes sense. If the work is done over a distance of 0.75 meters, what's the average force on the bullet? Well, I think I'm going to start out saying work equals work, which is a little obvious. But what I really mean by that is 1960, I'll use my answer button, equals force times distance. Force is going to be 1960 answer button divided by the distance 0.75 divided by 0.75. Using my answer button, I get 2,610 newtons. So this is the beauty of the work energy theorem. It allows you to relate force, distance, work, energy. It's really quite flexible. Number five, what is the potential energy? Well, potential energy is going to be m G H, it's going to be 500, Mr. Duke, 50 times 9.8 times 400. That's what 4 times 10 to the 2 is. Do that one in your head, Mr. Duke. Well, there's going to be a 20 with three zeros. That's going to be a 20,000. 196,000? And that is joules of stored energy. What's the change in potential energy when it falls to a height of that? Well, change in anything is going to be final minus initial. So the initial was 196,000. The final is going to be 50 times 9.8 times, I need more room, Mr. Duick. 50 times 9.8 times 200. I am going to get a negative answer, I think. 50 times 9.8 times 200 minus 196123. Negative 98,000? We lost 98,000 joules of potential energy. Does that mean we lost energy? No, it's conserved. It went into, if we ignore air resistance, kinematic. It went into kinetic energy. This object is speeding up. Bike rider approaches a hill with a speed of 8.5. The total mass is that. Find the kinetic. Okay, kinetic energy is a half mv squared. And I'm going to go straight to my calculator. It's going to be 0 0.5 times 85 times 8.5, don't forget the squared. And I get 3,071. I'll go 3,070 to three sig figs. Joules. The rider coasts up a hill, assuming there's no friction, at what height will the bike come to a stop? And I'm kind of imagining, I think there's a change in height, change in speed, and probably a yucky, curvy path. This is definitely conservation of energy. But I'm going to cut corners a little bit. I'm going to argue, I think, all of the initial kinetic is turning to the final potential, because it says the driver coasts, so they're not pedaling, they're not adding any extra energy into the system. I think 3,070, but I'm going to use my answer button, equals mgh final. I think h final is going to be 3,070, again, using my answer button, divided by mg85 times 9.8, divided by 85 times 9.8. And I get three point six nine meters.
Suppose an object is traveling at 10 meters per second. What happens to its kinetic energy if we double its velocity? Four times larger. Suppose a toy car is at the top of a ramp. If we ignore friction, how much kinetic energy will it have at the bottom? I think what we're arguing here is all of the initial potential is going to turn into all of the final kinetic. So I can't tell you what the final kinetic energy is, but I can find what the initial potential energy is, and that'll be the same answer. The final kinetic energy is going to be mgh initial, because it's the same as the initial potential. It's going to be 3.5 times 9.8 times 2.3. And I get 78.89, is that right? 79.9 joules of energy. Did I read wrong? 78.9, sorry. B. What will speed be? Okay, well, I guess kinetic energy is going to be a half mv squared, so v is going to be 2 times the kinetic energy divided by m. It's going to be 2 times the answer button divided by what was m3.5. And I get syntax error. Where's my typo? and then square root of that. 6.71. Uh, I would give you one mark for part one. One mark for that. Half mark for that. Half mark for the answer. But if you got both answers right, you get three out of three for that question. Any lawyering with me now is the time. Otherwise, if you'd be so kind as to pass the quizzes back inwards, first in the middle, put them in a nice neat pile, all facing the same way.